Hashtag no music, no intro. This is the Monday Night Football Preview Pod Saints Block Party Podcast. Ryan and I are going to be breaking down, previewing the upcoming matchup with the New Orleans Saints taking on the Carolina Panthers. Listen, if you follow our content, you, you follow along with us, like you should know at this point we had John Hendricks on from Sports Illustrated with a chef's kiss of a oh. podcast episode. So we did hit on some things regarding the Panthers game a little bit, but we didn't go super in-depth. Um, but before we go into any hard hitting things for the preview just wanted to give a huge shout out to everyone who uh purchased or reached out and requested and reserved a saints block party podcast t-shirt um the first batch of orders excuse me um put in put place tonight the second batch is to uh tomorrow they'll be placed tomorrow morning so we got to up to like 54 total t-shirts which is a a lot more than what i was expecting uh, if you miss the boat and what have you, you know, you may be able to reach out and, and see what can be done. But that was something that Ryan and I were very on top of, of getting the message out. Anyone who wanted a t-shirt just reached out, needed to. Um, also, if you're watching this on YouTube, please like and subscribe. Uh, we're getting close to 700 subscribers on YouTube, but our YouTube channel for the Saints Block Party podcast on YouTube. We're slow close. bill, slow bill, slow. baby. So just we, come we, on. We, we, we gonna get there. So if you're li- watching this, even if you're not watching, if you listen to podcasts or you just listen to us all on through your ears, but you have a YouTube account, go to YouTube, pull us up, like, subscribe. Very simple. It helps us out. Um, I just want to just also say this about what we have come in plan, man. Everything's we're slowly getting it together for this meetup for this Bears game in November, man. And man, this shit feels like it's gonna be a movie, bro. Like movie, baby. It's gonna be a movie, bro. Like it is insane. Like how many people are are coming? So many people who are coming. It's their first Saints game, like mm-hmm. in the dome, and I'm just like that makes me just feel just happy inside. So if you're a Patreon, and you, I, I would say like we're gonna we're kind of getting close to capacity right now, bro. Like yeah, I, man. it's getting it's getting tight, bro. But tight, we man. have at least six, seven, eight people coming from the UK. Like it's 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 insane. That's thank y'all, truly, 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 for real. Um, it's gonna be fun, man. Fun, fun fucking, fun fucking weekend all weekend, that Bears game. And if the Saints continue to maybe do what they've been doing starting week one, fucking, like, it might be, uh, you know, let's, let's time out. Let's talk about, let's talk about the Panthers game, bro. Before you even talked about the Bears game. Uh, let's get Bears week weekend. two, babe. We got week two. We got to talk about this Panthers game. This game, and I, and I know... Greg Rosenthal, when we were we were talking, texting about it recently, he's like, "Oh, it's just it's just September." It's just, I'm like, I I know it's just September, but like this game with the Saints, this game would tell me so much about this team, so much about this team, because thanks to our dude Eric, aka Who That Homo, aka Eric Esquire. Pulling in our Discord. I'm pretty sure, like, he didn't research it himself. I'm sure he saw it on Twitter, but he's still pulling our Discord that the Saints have not started a season 2 and 0 since 2013, Ryan. How crazy is that, bro? That is crazy. Because when he when this question was brought up, I was thinking, I was like, damn, when did we win, go 2 and 0? I was like, Ryan, my daughter was three. <laughs> <laughs> bro. So. They have a lot of things going, like, quote-unquote, going against them, right? They haven't started a season 2-0 since 2013. They have struggled, especially recently, with the Carolina Panthers, even against Carolina Panther teams who are kind of talent deficient, coached by Matt Rule, had yeah. Baker Mayfield. Week 17 last week had Sam Darnold. Don't matter. Man, you pull up that Sam Darnold start, stat line and the fact that Bruh. the Saints lost that game, it, it makes – no, like, like the lo- the lowest light in DA's coaching coaching right. career. Like the whole like they should put that on the wall. Like that's it. Your team meetings. Like this is the game we lost last year. Lost, 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 lost that game. 
they going into this game Monday Night Football, the Saints are as healthy as we've seen them. I expect you know John Hendricks said on our, on our podcast expected Kendra Miller to to be ready for this game. He was eliminated he today. Looks like he's trending. Yep, looks like he's Time trending for baby. <laughs> I was like, he saw, he saw it, bro. It was, it was like Doctor Strange when he was looking at all the outfits. It was just like, one. Like, <laughs> um, so he he's expected to play. So you, you're adding him to a run game that is like a run game that needs some umph, right? Mm-hmm. Everyone pretty much is healthy. We'll see what Jawan Johnson if he's healthy. He's like the only one that he, you know he was limited today and you know in practice with the calf, but. As healthy as the Saints team we've seen in forever. Even g- more healthy than they were in week one, I would say, right? Probably going getting... back to 2019, maybe? Like, it's, yeah. it's been a long time long since time. they've been this healthy, bro. Long time. They're facing a Panthers team that lost their starting guard in, ba- in Brandon Christensen. So you're going to have a backup on the interior. It may, it may be. Throck got me on Rob Morton, bro. It might be former Saints. Throck. Cal- Calvin Throck Martin. Might be. We'll see. Well, I'm going to play the G- game is like, what? For you all. <laughs> Yo. Well, I'm going to play the game is like, trust Pan- me. Bro, pa- pancakes. <laughs> Just getting the seal blocks, bro. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bro. This Throck uh, Morton guy, he is. <laughs> how, how, how do you, how the Saints let him be? <laughs> how the Saints let him go? It's like, what? <laughs> So he, you know, so the Panthers offensive line, which was already an issue, already get, you know, in theory gets worse because of Christensen being out. JC Jack, sorry, JC Horn, not JC Jackson. JC Horn has had a very up and down start to his his, his career in the NFL. Um, injured, not going to play against this game. I predicted as a rookie, though. I said it, bro. Like, I was like, he's going to get an interception when we play him. When yep. he, That's exactly what he did. That's what he did, bro. Um, everything, everything, Ryan, everything is trending that the Saints should go in to Carolina and handle fucking business. I'm not saying it's like one of those old school Sean Payton, like, no. 40 burgers and stuff. But no. at least, like, like it's it's comfortable throughout most of the game and but I, and as much i'm on the bus guys ty i'm, I'm on, on the bus, bus. Die. i'm on the bus i'm, I'm on it I'm, I'm holding the the thing i'm i'm ready for it the bus but that's no <laughs> like i'm rosa park might be a little upset but i'm like i don't want to be on the front like this game just gives me like such a i don't know and it's more about what we've seen whether it's DA, whether it's Sean Payton, what we've seen in the past where the Saints are put into position where they should at least handle their business somewhat and they just go out and just lay an egg. I'm not saying they're going to lay an egg, but this game, they should they, they should win, and that's why I say it's going to tell us so much on Monday Night Football. Well, it's about slaying ghosts, bro. It's, it's not even mm. about the opponent. It's about slaying ghosts of the past. Um, it's about being the best team you could be week to week. Um, it's about showing, like, can this team, uh, like, you know, just be that team that can stack wins early, you know. Early. Doesn't even, doesn't even have to be, like, perfect wins, you know what I'm saying? Just figure out a way to win. That's the that's the thing when you watch the NFL. These early season games, man, mean so much down the line. Huge. You know, and, Huge. It, and there's, you know, every team right now, most teams right now are imperfect. They're trying to figure out their identity. You know, they're, you know, they're rusty. Uh, some are banged up. Every team is trying to figure out things right now. Nobody's really perfect right now except, like, 49ers maybe. So, you know what I'm saying? Oh, but, no. Yes, continue. To, I'm sorry. <laughs> but I'm saying, like, so everybody's trying. But you still have to find those little ways to win the game. And just win like the, game, the Saints did, they did past Monday. They figured out. They went to win that game. Um, against which, a tougher, a tougher opponent. Against a tough opponent, and I think I, I'm telling you, watch Tennessee uh, Titans go out and look pretty good. You know, the next oh, couple of weeks. I believe it, bro. You know what I'm saying? I believe it's, it exactly. So I'm, I don't think that's like a sorry opponent that they face. Oh, I, I, at all. <laughs> right. I, they, they. I think even they probably deserve a little more credit 
for able to sneak that win out than probably we even gave them after they won that game. Honestly, we'll see. Like we'll see how the, what the season unfolds. So you said it perfect. It's about slaying ghosts and it's about showing not, I mean, not to the fans because like who cares what the fuck we think. Although some people do. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's more about showing yourself as a team. Like this is what we're here to do this season. We're going to be a team that is competitive, that is talented, and that for all intents and purposes, if we're healthy, it doesn't matter who the opponent is. Just like you said, if we play our game, we should be able nine times out of ten to get the win, right? Right. So that's where I come from. It's like, can that can this Saints team, DA second year as head coach, go into a game where they're going to be favored? I don't even know what, what, what the line, what's the line for this game, bro. I got two three the points, line. I believe. Is that all it is? Yeah, last time I checked. Oh, shit. Okay. Since. I, I thought it was higher for whatever reason. But I am going to give you – I'm going to say some things where the Panthers could call us some, some, some rockets, right? Oh, yeah. Got our lads up right now. Okay? Just like I went down the list when I saw that Titans defense, and I was like, ooh, looking at this – Panthers defense and Panthers defense is always getting has historically given the Saints trouble. Who don't care who's been head coach, don't care what the personnel is, it's historically given them trouble, right? I see Derek Brown, high high pick on the defensive tackle. He had a great apparently he had a really good game against the uh, the Falcons yeah, man. in week one. Yeah, man. He, yeah, I, his why he dropped in the anyway. I'm not gonna get started on that. Brian Burns, where we've seen firsthand how he has changed a direction of, of a game. I still oh, yeah. think of that that forced fumble he got on Breeze. Who man, who was left tackle that that snap? Green right? Green Greenleaf. There, it, it was Greenleaf. <laughs> <Nothing before. laughs> like who the hell is this guy? Fuck is this Greenleaf? <laughs> right? So you got oh. Brian Burns, you got Shaq Thompson, who's gotten older, but you know still in the league. Like, still damn. in the league. And I this this is the name that I forgot was even on the Panthers, and I just saw it, and I was like, "Oh shit!" Got Justin Houston. Oh, I forgot about that. Oh, I bet you don't. I bet you know who did forget about that. Oh, man, that entire Saints offensive line after that Ravens game last Remember season. Remember that bro. shit? Yeah, man, won Defensive Player of the Year after Monday Night Football against when he was with the Ravens. So. This is going to be the, the story of the Saints season, at least specifically offensively all season. Yeah. It all boils down to the offensive line. Like, we know, we, got, we know they got the weapons. We know they got the weapons. But if the offensive line, one, doesn't give Derek Carr time, two, doesn't open holes in the run game, we, we may see a lot of games like we saw in week one where it's tight games. It's, it's things that, it shouldn't be as close maybe as it as it is. I want Pete Carmichael, who I think had a, had, had a pretty goddamn good game plan against the Titans. There were some – my critiques of his game plan, though, was I felt like at least early in that game, the game plan was kind of curtailed to go after the Titans secondary and attack yeah. the secondary with deep plays or long and – and the line was just not holding up. It just right. was not holding up. Nope. I get it. J.C. Horn's out. The Panthers secondary also has Von Bell. Kind of have forgotten about that. Um, Von Bell, Jeremy Chin, like those are good safeties. Cornerbacks, mm -hmm. eh. If if the line is showing you early that it may not hold up for what you want to run offensively on passing concepts, I, I want to see that adjustment happen a little sooner than it did against the Titans. Shorten it up. Chris Olave on crossers because all this, I don't I just don't want to see Brian Burns coming in and sacking you know strip sack Derek Carr can we no. not leave Trevor Penning on an island early against an elite pass rusher like whatever he was doing against Art and Key like Art like Brian Burns is like Art and Key times 10 bro. like you have to have a plan that's to, that's to me that is the entire like I don't even worry so much about the defense against the Panthers' offense, and I know it's weird because it's like, oh, it's a rookie quarter. 
if the offense can come out and protect Derek Carr, this game shouldn't be close. No question. And I think if you go back and watch the uh, Titans-Saints game, you really come away feeling a lot better about Derek Carr. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Um, Because, he, bro, he was pressured on almost 50% of his dropbacks. Almost 50%. It was something like 45%. That's, and he, that's insane. Like, that's insane. And he is a player that <clears throat> typically, like, historically has gotten criticism for seeing Ghost in the pocket. Yeah, exactly. And, and if you watch that Titans game back, bro, like, he was – he was like there was some, there were some bad throws here and there that probably was because of yeah. like gross pressure. But like all in all, he played a a goddamn good game. And I'll tell you this about Derek Carr, bro. I said on I said on Twitter, I said Derek Carr leads us to a Super Bowl, man. Let me go find my let me find my vest. I'll sew an eagle on that shit. It'd be black and gold. Me and you roll up just just at the Super Bowl party. Oh, well, but I I'll, I'll hold the sign, bro. It's, it's about that time, bro. <laughs> like oh, he was right. Party. One six, <laughs> one day <dash> six. <laughs> uh, for real, but but yeah, man. He like I am watching the mic dub, seeing the personality, oh. seeing his pat, seeing how he's on the sideline. You know, getting teammates hype, keeping engaged. People like, well, you know, I just saw before we started querying, like James on Twitter was like, well, technically, like James Winston did the like, no, man, this is it was it's different. You cannot it's tell different. me, yeah, you cannot tell me it's the same. You can't. Yeah. No, no, I agree, I agree. And here's the thing, bro. Like you said, man, it comes down to the offensive line play. It's it's such a a fine balance we have to strike with Penny because we want. He's going to have to learn under fire. Um, and you want to give him a chance to develop. Right. But you can't let him completely Derail. ruin the offense. Can't do it. You can't You can't let that happen. So he's on a short leash, bro. Like, I, I don't know what the plan would be if Yavi was to be benched. And I'm not calling for him to be benched. But you have to have a plan in place to not let him derail the offense. Because even once you do adapt, even once you – Chip, add, you know, tight end, um, shorten the pass game up and stuff right. like that. That's, you know, the playbook you starts to contract. Yeah, you can yeah. start to condition your offense. Against somebody like Carolina, it might not mean much. But as you go against better competition, you know, that means a lot. Right. Um, so the hope is that Tim, uh, Trevor Penning does improve week to week. I'm sure he doesn't like seeing his name on Pro football talking. Mm-mm. National media. National Tim, news talking about Tim, 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 that nigga. I mean, come on, bro. Like, y'all don't even pay attention to the Saints. Y'all go, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I'm sure he's working his butt off, you know what I'm saying, to get better. And you got to give I, him the chance to do that. Yes, yeah, you, you do. Got to. You do. Uh, I, I think it's also important to note that it's like last week wasn't just on Trevor Penning. Like, mm-hmm. Eric McCoy did not have the greatest game. You know, Ruiz had an okay game. Hurst was like, and that, and whether you take that as credit to the Titans front four or I don't know, I don't know. but I, you know, yes, Trevor Penning is going to have to be better, but you also, the Saints have to realize that because that tape is out, every fucking defense you go against, they are either going to line their best pass rusher against Trevor Penning and say, eat his lunch. Or if he gets better throughout the season, they may figure up, cook up some blitzes and try to <laughs> confuse whatever. So as as Pete Carmichael, Ronald Curry, y'all it, y'all got to figure that out. Doug Marone, figure that out in figure regards out. to get, what the, what the what the plan's going to be. Give him something to hang his head on. Like find something Run that blocking. he's good at. Get, Run blocking, but even in pass protection, yeah. like don't get beat inside. Like. Mm. Okay, maybe you get beat on the outside. Bro, okay, that's a, that's a card, no sin for a, a tackle, yeah, bro. Right, but just or any offensive lineman, any offensive line, like don't get beat on the inside. They, at least, at least we know that much. We could right. work the outside. You could chip. You could have the quarterback step into the pocket if you know if there's a pocket to step into. Um, there's things you could do, you know, but don't get beat inside. Like start perfecting those little things that you could count on for him. Uh, it's it's just gonna be it's gonna be interesting to, it's gonna be interesting to see because so much is dependent on Trevor Penning but like you say whole offensive lines to be better bro they do 
They do. And Almost I, half of the dropbacks he was pressing on. Like that's boom. that is insane. Like that is, is. insane. And I feel like I, I know Tre- I, I know Penning got like the brunt of it for because like he had like the 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 biggest like you know it was in the spotlight the most because it was it was pretty obvious. But the offensive line just in totality has to play better. Um, I, I mentioned Kendra Miller earlier, and this again it goes he goes hands up you know with the offensive line because the offensive line can run block like. Him being in this game, I, besides the Chargers game where he made those two two good plays and it was good to see, I I haven't been really been, been impressed with him all off season, Ryan. Like, I, just, I haven't, and I'm not saying like I'm not I'm not like, but just having him healthy, ho- hopefully he is 100 percent healthy. He can bring an element to the offense where that maybe if the offensive line is, is having some difficulty or whatever you have a, a, someone that is a, it's an option in the shorter passing game. You can run a screen. You could do some things with him where the offense can still flow. Even if the offensive line struggles, but at the end of the day, like the, the success of this team is going to, especially offensively, it's going to rise and fall with the offensive line period. Yep. That's not just the Saints. That's any NFL team period. Right. 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 Um, but that said, the weapons that the Saints have at wide receiver and at tight end should be able to take advantage of a lot of matchups. Oh yeah, in with this Carolina defense, no question. Like the, Dante Jackson is their their cornerback too because of J.C. Horn's injury. They have uh, Xavier Woods. Oh, sorry, they have Xavier Woods at safety. Um, C.J. Henderson. Remember that almost. Trade yeah. that the Saints made trading for CJ Henderson from the Jack. He's yeah. been terrible. Yeah. Terrible for the Panthers. There's there and that and this is the struggle because I know how offensive coordinators think. Because I know how it's because I've seen Sean Payton coach for so long. I'm not saying all offensive coordinators are like this, but at least how Sean Payton was. It's like shit, we got CJ Henderson on the outside against Chris Olave. Yeah. 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 Ooh, like so. Cannon, cannon. Right. <laughs> barbecue, barbecue chicken. So it's so enticing, right? Because you're like you're about to fucking just pull them panties to the side and just, mm, right? But you you got to be you got to be selective when you do, and you don't have. And I, it's it's a it's a balance because you don't want to be too addicted to trying to take advantage of that so often, so many times because you think that's a matchup you can exploit where you're putting the offensive line like you're asking the pass pass block on a drop that's too that's too deep, right? Or or whatever it is. It has to be a balance. And hopefully, can we see some improvement in the run game? Oh my Jeez. God. Please. Please. Please, bro. Makes everything else easier. Like, I'm not saying that the Saints offensive line is like the Philadelphia Eagles, but like what they did, what the Eagles offensive line just did against the Vikings, bro. Bullied them. Bullied 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 them. them. All game. And look, the Falcons did that to the uh, Panthers last week, man. Just bullied them around. I know that's going to be the Falcons bread and butter, and that's not ours, but like, man, but there should be something that be had. Like, come on now. Like, Titans, okay. Number one run defense last year. I'll give you the pass. This game, and I'm not even asking for a lot. Just give me 3.9 yards per carry. 3.9. <laughs> give me, give me, give me a total. Give me a total number of yards between Jamal and Kendra that make you that decently satisfied. You know what? I mean, if they had like, uh, if they had like say 25, I ain't gonna say 25, like 23 rushing attempts. At like four point two yards per carry, I'd be fine with that, bro. Like, how many yards is that? Four times twenty two, like almost hundred. Like yeah, like almost hundred. Oh, I'd be okay. Man, I, not, it wouldn't blow me away, but it's like it's positive running game. You know what I'm saying? Bro, I, I just want to see positive. Like, yeah, I was thinking like six sixty five, bro. Like, <laughs> that's the, I just want to see positive running game. Yes. like I, I, I didn't see it last. Like last mm. week, the running game was. It hurt the offense. Like yeah. the running game actually hurt the offense. They were, they we were were constantly in third, but we were constantly in third and long, and Derek had to make some amazing throws 
to get you know get through. I don't want to. I want to see second down. I want to see us not have to get the third down. You know what right. I'm saying? So it's going to be interesting to see how they uh, they have got the pass game. What fascinated me and really gave me hope with Pete Carmichael is like we talked about with Chris Olave, you know, being lined up in the backfield, backfield. being moved in motion. They're giving Chris Olave opportunities to beat man. You know what I'm saying? To beat mm-hmm. man coverage, um, running those man beaters, giving them lined up on different options. They didn't do that last year at all. At all. Like, at all. They they are. It feels like there's like, and I don't know they, you know, no, I don't think they ever ever say it publicly, and and, and I think you know Mike Thomas is a point in his, his career, like he's always going to be uber 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 competitive. But I think Mike just wants to win, bro. Like yeah. Mike want to win, and I think I think that I will say this, like I do get the sense that that is a commonality between everyone on the team, of yeah. like not really caring about stats, not really caring about how many balls they get, how much what numbers they put up. If they win in. They don't care. And I, and that is, it, it's a special thing because not all players or not all teams are, are like that. Right. Oh, no, so no, no. that cr- credit that to DA <coughs> or credit that to the guys that they bring in, but it's just a sense that it gets. I, I wonder if there's been like a subtle passing of the torch to Chris mm. Olave to wide receiver one, just, Interesting. just a little one. Right. I like, I watched that game. And in the second half where Chris Olave did, I'm like, he, he's doing wide receiver one shit, right? Like right, right, make, right. B- making big ass plays, clutch plays when the team, when the offense needs it the most. Like I, anyhow, that said, th- there's, there's matchups that can be exploited all throughout the Panthers secondary, all throughout their, even their, their linebackers. They just, they, the Saints got to have the, t- like Derek Carr has to have the time, you know, to, to, to do them basically. Come back um, to the old line. <laughs> uh, hold on, let's 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 flip it over though. Um, I also I just want Saints fans. I, I know Brian Burns is gonna get the headlights, the headline. Excuse me. Don't sleep on Derek on on Derek Brown and Justin uh, Houston. Man. Don't sleep on him, bro. Don't, don't, don't sleep, sleep on, him. on him. Um, Panthers offense, Saints defense. Bryce Young had two bad interceptions against the Falcons. The consensus of that game is that the Panthers offensively just do not have any type of weapons to threaten a defense vertically. So it seems like a lot of their offense was very, speaking of condensed, right? Condensed, horizontal, nothing down the field. Um, That, even though it was week one, the first thing I hear when I think, first thing I think when I hear that is fucking first offensive play for the Panthers is going to be a, a deep, a deep shot. Pitch, it on. should be offensively. Like if you're right. an offensive coach, it should be right. Frank Wright has, has shown to be a good um, offensive coordinator, good head coach in the league. And so at the very, at the very least, you want to be able to keep the Saints defense honest. Exactly. Um, Back you, got Bryce, you got Bryce Young, who is obviously we talked about his height at, at, at nauseum. The wide receiver core for the Panthers leaves a lot to be desired. You got the courts of Alan, Adam Thielen, uh, Jonathan Mingo, who they drafted in the second round. Fun fact, the Saints wanted to draft him in the second round. He was higher on their board um, than where Isaiah Foskey was. And mm. um, who else? Uh, DJ Chark. Yeah. Like, let's talk about Marshawn. Marshawn Lattimore, he's he wants to be like either the he wants to be the best cornerback in football this season, right? Period. For for that to happen, he can't have games where he has lapses because in his mind he's like, oh man, hey, hey, it's such and such. I ain't got to worry about it. And that's how he was in the past. He was like, what? Yes, he very much was. So for him to like get to the point where he wants to be, he has to go out. And the same mindset he had when he going when he's going against Devontae Adams, when he's going against New, New Hopkins, I get Mike Adam Thielen, Mike Evans. I get it. Adam Thielen's had better days, and but like Adam Thielen has torn Marshawn like a, his a new fucking asshole in the past. Bro. He's given him fits, fits. Man, I want him to approach this like, nah, man, I, I got Adam Thielen. Like, don't worry send, about this. Send Thielen to retirement, please. That's how I would do it. Like. Get out of here. Make him show how old he is. You know what I'm saying? Please. Like, 
I would this, I wouldn't let him catch nothing. Nothing. Because of the injuries that the Panthers have on their offensive line. Also, the, I mean, the offensive line was not good even before uh, 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 Brady Christensen got, got injured. No. Th- the same type of pressure and, like, at points just dominance that the Saints defensive line put on the Panthers, or excuse me, put on the Titans offensive line in week one. I need a replay. I need, I need to see that. it again. I Give need to see it again. It's a little different, though, because I and I wonder if D.A. may change some things of how he wants to employ them to rush, because unlike, you know, Ryan Tannehill is is a, is a good athlete. I'm not trying to take away any, anything from him, but him trying to evade pressure and, and scrambling compared to someone like Bryce Young is two completely different things. So yeah. with Ryan Tannehill, you can rush and not really kind of worry about your gap containment and worry about containing for the most part. Can't really do that with with, with with Bryce Young. So, like, this is a game, not so much even the edge rush pressure. I need I need, I need number 90. I need Colin Saunders to get in. I need Malcolm Roach. Like, that interior, if it's collapsing on Bryce Young, it's going to make that entire Panthers offense hard to move the ball. Right, right. And I agree. And I th- also think, like, D.A., Show the, little, show the little rookie some things. You know what I'm saying? Mix it up. Because mm. DA, like, so people assume, like, DA is, like, this, like, super exotic defense. Like, but it's really not. It's kind of simple. No. Mm-hmm. He rushes four a lot, rushes three. Um, You know, he, he drops back. He, you know, he plays. Yeah. Yeah, he does the game with the pressure and stuff like that. Yep. Not saying he's a simplistic, D, but it's not as exotic as you would think. But I it's would not like as to see him. Ex- it's not as but, exotic as people think because he has his trust that he has the players that they're exactly. better than the offensive players. So he, he doesn't gotta be exotic. Yeah, like, I know my I know my that. guys I know my guys got this. I know my guys gonna win. So I don't have to be exotic. I can I can show you exactly what it is or maybe bluff something here and there, but my right. guys got it. Like and that's exactly I mean to to his credit. Well, you know, whether he was a DC or whether, you know, he's been the head coach, his defensive largely has has backed that up yeah absolutely absolutely but you know against a rookie i like oh, to see him show a little something bring 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 a little pressure from honey badger um you know just give me you know mix it up a little bit you know maybe later in the game or something like that um i also would like to like they like you talking about with the qb scrambles gotta be careful with that because you know with a young qb they will run like it's yes. like you know, it's like fight, fight or flight, flight. Fight or flight, he's like, jinx. oh, telling he's like, oh shit, let me get out of here. You know what I'm saying? So, and we've seen it where that's 30 yards, that's you know, 20 yard chunks, 15 yard chunks, keeping plays alive. So they're gonna have to contain uh, and gonna have to get on him and punish him, bro. Like I ain't saying. Can we, can we get Jalen Smith? Can we get Jalen Smith on this? This is a Jalen Smith. Going on? Bro. Like what is going on with that man? Like are my like, eyes deceiving me? I I know they're not, bro. I know I know mine. I I. I can we get like I said it, bro? Like this is the game you I told John when he was on. Jalen Smith, like he's I'm not like I'm not saying he needs to spy Bryce Young on every single pass and play, but to him to deploy him as a spy some of the game, like just just I, some. I don't, I don't need to see Zach Dawn on defense. I don't need don't, to see don't him. need it, bro. Keep him on on pump block. Keep him on you know him doing special teams. Him. He, tr- he right trying to there. move Brian Reese Brian Reesade. To get him out the gap to avoid a penalty, <laughs> like that's that, that's good shit though. Like as, it's good as stuff, a, right? It's good stuff. I don't, I don't need, I don't on the field though. Like I don't, I don't, especially against someone like Bryce Young, bro. I don't need that. Don't need it in my life. Don't need it. So let me just go. So, um, they got Hayden Hurst. They got Miles Sanders. Miles Sanders when he was with the Eagles, you know, and he Miles Sanders for the most. Yeah, like he. I will say, kind of seeing some some clips embody breakdown like the Panthers time to time did get some good good runs out of Miles Sanders their offensive line mm-hmm. blocked the Panthers def- or sorry not the Panthers the uh, Falcons defensive line pretty well but the Saints defensive line in theory should be better than the Falcons defensive line I really want this to be a, like and you, you got it you brought this up DA showing that I want DA to show me that you have at least started to figure out how to stop these scrambling quarterbacks how to stop these quarterbacks who make plays that has historically been the kryptonite to his defense 
Yeah. Hurts. Um, Jalen Hurts is like the big one that always just like big one. Jay- <laughs> um, it may, you know, it's just it's it's something that you know because of how they drafted defensive linemen and their their edge rushers, like they didn't have the speed to keep up with these guys. Now you got a more athletic defensive line. Now you have Pete Warner, although Pete Warner doesn't have like that at least athleticism. But I do think in a game like this, having a player like Alante Taylor in the slot, think that could pay dividends, bro. Absolutely. We saw it in the run game against uh, sure Titans. Did. You know, he was right there. You know, so now nah, he absolutely makes a difference. Um, trying to think. I got, I ain't gonna say, it, but I just got. I think Frank Reich is kind of overrated. Um, I agree. I'm not. I, I. I'm yes. Yes. I think he's like this QB whisperer or something. I'm just like, I don't know. Like I don't know. <laughs> Scheme. I'm like, I, I mean, he talked about it, and I'm glad you said that. The first couple plays, look for a shot, because that's exactly what I was thinking. Because he talked about this week, Frank Reich was saying that. Jesse Bates broke the rules. Those two. Yep. On those because he had they no challenge. Fear. Right. No challenge at all. So I think they have it, it was, in their mind. They want to challenge it. It was exactly how defenses used to play Drew Brees later in his career when he didn't have any offensive weapons. Exactly. Exact the Mundo. Um, same way. Which so, is, you know, but it's very, that's wild that the Panthers are getting played like that when they just drafted like a 20 year old fucking quarterback. It has nothing to do with him. It's, yeah, just, it's, just, it's just everything it's else. Just, everything that's else, wild. bro. Like, just send DJ Moore to get him, you know. It's like, huh? But, you know, so, but, you know, you can get got like that. Look, the, the, the Titans dialed up two plays last week that should have been touchdowns. Should have been, should have been touchdowns, bro. And we just got lucky. Like, just luck shined on us. So, you know, the defense has to be wary of things like that, man. Like, he can cook something up to get that a birth. If you line up first down, you I, know, Marshawn Lecklemore right there, right there, right there, eye to eye. And the Debo on the other side, eye to eye with the wide receiver. It's like, dial it up, baby. Dial yes. it up. Like, I, I just – I feel it in my bones. Like, because I, I just – I know how – I know how coaches think. They're like, oh, mm-hmm. well, you know, yeah, we, they think we can't throw that shit deep. Oh, mm-hmm. oh I got something for them. Yeah. Like, they just don't think predictable, bro. <laughs> <Yep. laughs> so predictable. Oh, been there. <laughs> um, who, who are the, who's the Panthers kicker? Oh, uh, fucking, wait. Oh, that's a punter. Oh, Eddie Pinero. Okay. Just seeing who their, who their kickers were. Um, but I mean, I think, I mean, we've, we've hit, on pretty much of all of it, man. Give oh, me your man. prediction. Give me your prediction. Saints, Saints win. Going, Saints going. Uh oh, they're going two and zero. Saints win, bro. They're going two and zero, bro. We on the bus. I'm on the bus. You know, it's about to win this thing, bro. It's I'm gonna winning. be. It's gonna be a little stressful game in the beginning, but the Saints go pull out, man. I'm gonna say this. Look how much on the bus I am right now. They win the next two. They're gonna beat the Panthers. They're gonna go to Green Bay. They're gonna handle Jordan Love. I ain't about to say all that now. I don't know. No, I, not only did I say it, <laughs> saying it with my chest. Say it with your chest. Saying it with my chest. They're going three and zero. Um, we we shall see what happens. That said, it is a Monday Night Football game. The Zoom needs to be popping. We got like 22, 23 people there for the the home opener in Week One. I want to get 25. I want to see if we can get 30, 30 bitches, 30 people in that fucking Bring your zoo. drinks. Bring your own drinks. Woo. Pull about it up. To go, about to go hit some cup go ahead and uh, go ahead and cup, cup water. water going, bud. <laughs> bro, I drank three of them, and I drank like the, like the mini ones, bro. I didn't even know they had the mini ones, bro. I was <laughs> eating that bitch, bro. I'm going to have to have you go get some for yourself. For for the yeah. Zoom on Monday, bro. Go, I gotta get, get some. Yeah. Get the, either the the lime margarita. The lime margarita is like the classic. It's the it's the the best one. Ten percent okay. alcohol. Oh, you will lovely. Anyway, okay. We will have it popping on Monday Night Football Saints Block Party podcast. We'll have the Zoom. We'll have the live stream. Um, we got y'all guys. We got y'all covered. Like it's gonna be a fun time. Saints should win this game. Do I think it's going to be an easy game? Do I think it's going to be a game? No, because they're the Saints, and that's just not how things are. But I do think they'll come out with a win, um, and they should because of yeah. they're a healthier team. They're a more talented team. 
Um, and they should win, but we shall see. Anyway, just wanted to do a quick one. We're recording this Thursday night. It will be posted uh, hope either late tonight, late tonight slash Friday morning. So he gives you Friday, Saturday, Sunday, all the weekend and all of Monday to listen to the preview podcast before the game on Monday. Yep. As always, we will be recording our Monday night recap of week two immediately rapid recap after the game and i have a feeling we're gonna be having a like a, a victory celebration recap we we recorded yeah, so yeah buddy who ain't hey, supposed to get a sunday with no saints to oh oh lord back, put a oh, red zone uh, or... also i mean this is a little early but uh so monday we're obviously watching the same again girl but monday is also the anniversary for for jay and i so even though she oh, can hear this downstairs congrats bro much 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 love to the woman who has put up my put up with Shout my shit for the last fucking seven years. But um we will be back on Monday night recapping the game. Panthers, Saints, thank y'all for the support. We really, really appreciate it. If you're not a Patreon, please, please, if you have the ability to become a Patreon, the the perks benefits is through the roof. Through the roof. We can't we can't even talk about how many perks and benefits it comes with being a patreon but thank y'all for all the support whether you're patreon or not um retweets likes on social media it, it really goes a long way and we we, we thank y'all we, we truly do so with that we'll be back on monday recapping game we're out peace